Hi, welcome to another IELTS video. Today we are looking at how to feel confident when speaking. If you find this video helpful, I encourage you to visit my website at IELTSIELTS.com. The question of how to feel more confident when speaking is something that I am asked regularly, both in my online classes and in my classroom. And I wanted to create this little video to share a few of my thoughts with you and a few suggestions on how you can work towards being a more confident speaker. I have divided today's lesson into three parts. The first is preparation, and here we're going to talk about a few tips that you can use by yourself to prepare for the challenge of speaking. The second thing we're going to talk about is practice and how to properly practice with another person how to really improve your speaking when speaking with another person. And the final thing we're going to talk about is delivery, which is how to conduct yourself and how to speak effectively when in a stressful situation like the IELTS examination. When preparing to speak, we actually do not needs to have a speaking partner. There are a number of things that we can do by ourselves to help prepare us for the challenge of speaking to another person. Now I'd like to share a few quick tips with you that you can use to help sound more fluent and by sounding more fluent you can um, gain a sense of confidence. So the first thing I suggest to all students is to shorten your sentences when speaking. IELTS students sometimes believe that their examiner is looking to see long elaborate sentences when when the students you know describe various activities or 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 give their their monologue on the examination but that's not actually the case what your examiner is looking for is that you speak with grammatical accuracy that you fulfill um the requirements of your task and that you employ a fitting lexical resource so speaking, you know, in long, elaborate sentences and using complicated speech patterns is not really that necessary to, to score well. So don't fool yourself by thinking that you have to speak this way. Try shortening your sentences down to very basic ideas. And you'll find that in doing this, the, the accuracy of what you're saying and your overall fluency will improve. Now, a second thing that I always suggest is that students commit cohesive phrases to memory. So what this means is that you you make an effort to learn many, many different ways of linking ideas together. So this could include phrases like, as a child, as a student, as a, a graduate student, as a mother, as a, you know, this to, to start your sentence. So as a child, I remember being given a piano for my birthday. Now this little phrase at the beginning as a child is something that I've committed to my memory prior to 
uh, prior to speaking. And using these cohesive phrases to link my ideas together, I am making my, my overall speech patterns much easier to understand. Because of this, I could use this phrase, you know, to continue an idea. So, for example, if, if I was uh, talking about my childhood, as a child I was given a piano for my birthday. Because of this, I became increasingly interested in music. Now, what you can see is that, you know, there's two very basic sentences there. I was given a piano for my birthday, and... I became increasingly interested in music. These two sentences are, are small. They're, they're short. But all I'm doing is I'm adding some cohesive phrases to the beginning of them to, to make you know, the, the, the fluency of the, of the two sentences much, much easier to understand. So now, you know, when I speak, you can see the relationship between the two ideas. So, uh, so you know, um, learning these cohesive phrases, and, I, and when I say learning, I, I don't mean you know studying them on your page and and you know and just doing it like that. I, I mean you know by yourself in in your bedroom, repeating, 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 repeating. Because of this, because of this, because of this, because of this, as this shows, as this shows, as this shows, as a child, as as a man, as a teacher, as a student. You know, practicing, practicing, pra practicing these cohesive phrases. Keep practicing until they come naturally to you. So that when, you know, the next time that you're, that you're with your friends and, and you're, you know, you're practicing for your exam, these co cohesive phrases, they just come out naturally. You start linking your ideas together naturally using them. Uh, so that is my tip for the preparation portion of your study. Now, um, of course, it's very important to actually practice speaking with another person. And um, I completely agree when people say that um, you can't learn to speak from a textbook. So you, you need to find some speaking partners. It's okay if they're not native speakers. Of course, it's better if you can find people that are perhaps more skilled than you are, you know, but uh, find people who are, who are interested in the IELTS exam, who are going to take the IELTS exam, and practice your speaking with them. Now, when practicing your speaking, you should make an effort to practice productively. So by this I mean practice real IELTS um, IELTS type questions. Sometimes when I hear students in the hallways at my school and you know they tell me they're practicing for their IELTS exam I see that they're you know they're chit-chatting about about some topics that they they may know about and and you know that's helpful but um, but I think if you can really try try to as much as possible practice real IELTS type questions practice you know real cue cards that you can find on the internet practice these different topics and, and practice responding to them. So, so practicing what you will really face in the examination I think is, is, um, is a more effective way of studying. Now, in addition to this, I, I think it's very important to always include new vocabulary. in your study sessions. So for example, if, if today if we're going to be studying about um, speaking about our families, 
maybe we can find four, five, or six new vocabulary words or, or perhaps some colloquial phrases that uh, on the internet and we can include these in our in our practice and you know this is a great way to to really learn to use different vocabulary words and also to uh, to widen our lexical resource okay so practice productively that's tip number one now uh, secondly um, use technology to your advantage and what I mean here is that there are lots of resources that you can you can tap into I know lots of students you know they they sit in their bedroom and they have a textbook and you know I mean you don't have to stop there look on the internet and find some some sample uh, speaking responses the BBC has some the British Council has some You can find transcripts often for these responses. And when listening to the, to the responses, try, as best you can, try repeating. Don't just listen once. Listen multiple times. Go back. Repeat after the student what they're saying. Repeat, you know, the phrases that they're using. Make notes of anything new that you come across. Uh, when using technology, record yourself when you're speaking. Record the way that, that you speak about your family. Record the way that you talk about, uh, you talk in, in, in a monologue. Record the way that you, you, uh, you talk in a dialogue with a friend. Make notes of your weakness. Don't be shy to do these things. So for practice, use technology. Now, when it comes to the delivery portion, to become more confident, the very first thing is to go to the exam prepared. Go to the exam prepared. I know many students are probably thinking, of course, I mean, why, are, why would you even say this as a tip? But what I mean by prepared is go into the exam having memorized all of those cohesive phrases and having practiced them again and again and again so now that they are natural and having had many study sessions with friends and each of those study sessions included five or six or seven or, or even more new words and phrases. So now you, you know you have several hundred phrases, several hundred words that you perhaps didn't know before you started your study sessions. Go to the exam having finished at least 50 sample full speaking mock exams. You know this can be at school, this can be with your friend, this can be um, with a teacher, this can be even, you know, doing mock exams by yourself, for the, maybe for the, mo the monologue portion of the exam, recording yourself. When you get to the examination, there, there should be absolutely nothing that is new to you. You should, you should have practiced pretty much ev every conceivable topic that the examiner could throw at you. So, go to the exam prepared. Okay, now, uh, when it comes to delivery, stay calm. Again, I, I can see many people out there thinking this is, you know, not a very helpful tip. Of course, I'm trying to stay calm. Now, to stay calm, there's a number of things that you can do. But the thing that I find works the best, and what students tell me works the best, and will make you look much more fluent, is to use pauses to increase your confidence. So if you're in the exam, and you feel nervous, and you know for a moment you don't know what to say, 
just pause. Pauses are okay. Pauses are good. Just collect your thoughts and then deliver what it is that you are wanting to express. Now there are differences between good pauses and bad pauses. Bad pauses are pauses between each word. I mean, this makes you sound kind of robotic. It makes you sound, you know, like you're not a very fluent speaker. Good pauses are pauses that show the way your speaking would be written. How would it be punctuated? So that means that, you know, if, if, if this was a written phrase, if there was a comma, I should be taking a moment for a breath and then continuing my thought. So anytime that you feel nervous, just take a moment and, and just pause and collect yourself. This will help. Okay, so uh, that concludes the tips that I have regarding speaking. Um, if you would like to share a few of your own tips, please feel welcome to do that in the comments section of this video or come and tell us at uh, my blog. You're always welcome to do that as well. Thank you for joining me today. Have a nice evening.